Some of you lucky night owls will be getting your iPhone 7s tomorrow, but if you're still on the fence about the phone, the watch, or Apple's new AirPods, we thought we'd bring in Jim Dalrymple from Loop Insight, who's tried them all. Welcome back to the show, Jim. How you doing, Megan? I'm doing good. So let's start with the phone. Apple gave you a Jet Black 7 Plus to try out. First, how did that glossy goodness feel in your hand? <laughs> so I actually have two phones. I got a Jet Black uh, 7 and a Matte Black uh, 7 Plus. Oh. Yeah. So I got to try them both <laughs> and at different sizes. The, uh, the Jet Black actually looks like it'll be very slippery, but surprisingly, it's not. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it 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 has a, a not a it's not sticky, but it it feels really good in your hand. You you realize once you you put it in your hand that it's not going to just slip out, uh, even though the finish looks like it would. So you said you're sold on the jet black, um, but yes. you also had the matte black. Um, did you did you like the matte black? Was that a second place? <laughs> no, actually, matte black is first place. First oh. place all the way. Yeah, I I just. The, the, the matte black is so understated, um, and I think Apple does that really well with, with a lot of their things, but I just really like the finish of the matte black much better. Mm, well, good. Yeah. That's what I'm getting, but not till October, unless good. I bust into a store and you know find a fake name or something. And <laughs> who knows? Don't do that. <laughs> okay. I'll then they might I, cart I, you away. I don't know if you can oh, really, you you ha see that. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. I, the matte black on the, the screen actually looks, um, it, 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 when they showed it at the keynote, it actually, it kind of looked like a dull black, like almost a gray, mm -hmm. uh, but it's not. When you see it in person, it's, it's black, black. It's really nice, really nice. Did they, give you the, did, did they give you the jet black also, or did you have to give that one back in order to get the matte black? No, yeah. no, I, have, I, I get them both at the same time. Are you allowed to show us the jet black? I actually don't have it right here with me. It's in the other room, so I would have to get up and go get it. I'll do that. that if you no, want. no, that's okay. We uh, I, we should be surprised, right, for when we yeah. see it in the store. Yeah, we want a little element of surprise <laughs> yeah. here. Now, the, the Jet Black, look, when I saw that on the screen at the keynote, it looked gorgeous. And because it's polished, of course, it's going to look really, really nice for those hero shots and, and things like that. I just thought the, the black... Um, look better and they do warn that there's going to be micro abrasions on uh the jet black finish now i, I wasn't really sure what micro abrasions were uh you know your phone either scratches or it doesn't but the jet the jet black the gloss finish if you turn it to the sun will show little i guess abrasions they're not scratches so a scratch is something you know if you run your finger over it you can feel a scratch you can't feel these. Kind but of like little swirlies or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 So so about. those will be there on on the jet black finish. So if that's something that you're really concerned about, you can always get the, the black mm -hmm. instead. And those, I mean, that's just like a regular a regular finish that Apple and other companies have had. It's, it's a durable finish. And I'm one that doesn't really care about the finish. I mean, I'll stick it in my pocket with a pair of keys and if it gets scratched up, yeah, I don't care. Mm -hmm. But well, a lot of people do. Yeah. Uh, have you scratched it yet? The one they loaned you? No, let me see. <laughs> No, okay. no scratches. <laughs> Not <laughs> <Okay>. yet. <laughs> so let's talk about the camera. Um, you know, you're, you're a music guy, not a photographer. You say this in your review. Um, how easy were those new features in the 7 Plus camera to use? You know, uh, I, I, I told Apple before that I, I suck so bad at photography <laughs> that anything you can do to help me is a big plus for me because I don't think that any of us realize how much we all use our cameras now. We use them all the time taking pictures. And, you know, when when a company like Apple can come out with, with features that help you, it is wonderful. So in the review, I posted uh, a number of pictures, uh, like the ones that are on the screen right now. That's at one time. The next one is at two times. And the next one is at six times uh, zoom. So the first two are optical. That means that there's no digital things coming through uh, that could make the, the picture blurry. Those are using the lenses that are in the, the new, new iPhone uh, 7 Plus. And the third one is zoomed in uh, using digital zoom. 
So, you know, if you kept zooming in, maybe there would be artifacts. But I think those are pretty good pictures, especially for somebody like me that doesn't know how to take a picture. Uh, I just, I literally point and shoot. But in all of those pictures, I stood in exactly the same place, had the phone in exactly the same place, and just used the zoom uh, to, to move that. Yeah, Jim, so, it, there there have been a lot of, or at least there have been a, a handful of dual camera kind of approaches, a, a lot of them on Android, leading up to this. Everybody's doing it a little bit differently. Would you say that the use of zoom, uh, like zoom amount between the two cameras is probably the better kind of every person, you know, makes every person happy as opposed to, I don't know, like the wide angle option or some of the other ideas? You know, I think when, when people, People uh, speaking for me and, and other people like me who don't take pictures well. Uh, what we want is a picture that's in focus. Yeah. And that the very simple thing on screen, it has a little circle and it says one times. You press that circle and it automatically goes to two times. It's in focus. Uh, the colors look great. That's what I want. Uh, so whatever they did works. I mean, Apple talked about doing one billion operations in the camera per what uh, 25 milliseconds that's all great to say and i'm sure that photographers uh, love having that information all i know is i was able to take pictures and be able to zoom and it looked good so <laughs> right and uh, i know in your review you said you hadn't gotten a chance to take a picture like at a show or something in yeah. low light have you taken any uh, nighttime pictures since you posted your review I, i've taken some nighttime pictures and uh, they they look good. I mean, they you can see people in the the pictures. Um, they're in focus, so it it knows what's going on. But to me, the real test of a camera with uh, nighttime photos is going to a concert. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I'm sure that there are a lot of people out there that have tried to take pictures at a concert, and all you get from the stage, it just looks like one blob of light. Mm -hmm. You know, I I actually want to see people on the stage. I want to see uh, the different uh, colored lights that are up there. And I don't want it to look all grainy and, and all the digital artifacts that are in there. Mm -hmm. So I know what I want. I just, you know, as a, a novice photographer, I don't know how to get there. So I'm relying on them to get me there. Sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, you also wrote that you accidentally summoned Siri a few times. What can you tell <laughs> us about that? So the, the, the iPhone 7 has a new home button. It's no longer a button as much as it is a pressure control area. So on the old iPhone, we would actually press and hold on a, a physical button to invoke Siri. And on the new phone, because it's pressure sensitive area, I would press to unlock it, but because I was continuing to press a little bit, Siri would come up. So, you know, it took a couple of days to get used to that. And after that, it's been fine. Now I just, I, I remember to press and then let my, my thumb off a little bit because it's just not a physical button. It, it's pressure sensitive. Mm -hmm. Well, you are a musician. Uh, you are a music aficionado. Uh, what are your thoughts on the loss of the headphone jack? <laughs> you know, there, there's been so much written about the loss of the headphone jack. And um, I think it's great that the headphone jack is gone. And I think it's great not because of audio or anything else, but because it allows Apple to put other things in the phone, like opti optical image stabilization and larger battery. I mean, these are things that we need. And in order for Apple to move forward uh, with, with new technologies, space is at a premium. Something has to go or something has to shrink. A hundred year old um, headphone jack, goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, you know, well, I think the mini headphone jack was done in 1964. It hasn't changed really a whole lot since. Mm -hmm. So, you know, away you go. Now, to be clear, and people have said to me, well, maybe you don't care about this because you don't have a good set of headphones. The, the in-ear monitors that I use are from Future Sonics. They, they are $800. Uh, I do have a good set of headphones. Um, the, the guy that, that made, started Future Sonics, invented in-ear monitors. They are molded to my ears. I went to an audiologist to have all this done. Then they built the headphones around these molds. I went through a lot of trouble to get these headphones made. And they are stunning in their audio quality. So 
I do have a good set of headphones for for those people who 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 think I don't. Uh, but I, I think the difference here is that when people started complaining about the loss of a headphone jack, the majority of the people uh, didn't realize that Apple would actually include an adapter. So if you have older headphones, you can still use your old headphones. You're not going to lose the use of those. The adapter is included. And they include a, a set of wired Apple earpods, the white earpods. So when I told people that, th those two things, they, they said, oh, well, what's everybody complaining about then? Well, that's a good question. So your future Sonics, are they Bluetooth or do you use the dongle to listen no, to? No, dongle. I, I think my my reaction to the losing the, the headphone jack is less about the headphone jack not being there by default and more about the reliance on a dongle in the in the sense that when I have when I have a requirement of a dongle, it's yet another thing to keep track of. And, you know, say, I you know, depend on it being my backpack, it's not there. Well, then I'm, you know, I'm out of luck. I almost feel like what I would probably do in this case is tape the dongle to my preferred headphones. So it's always a part of that. Maybe they'll come up with a more elegant solution for something like that. That way it's always there. Then you kind of get the best of both worlds. But mm -hmm. But that's yeah. good to hear because I know you are a big music fan, so that uh, that speaks volumes. If you are okay with that that port being a, being away and it hasn't you know damaged your ability to to use your device in that way, then great. No, it it really hasn't. And yeah, believe me, I mean I've been yelling about uh, the faults in in Apple Music, so I do care about uh, audio and music, and I just don't see the big deal in in this part of it. Yeah. Yes, everyone who would say that Jim would never say something negative about Apple um, <laughs> should just go back and search Jim Dalrymple, <laughs> Apple Music. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, so what about the, the uh, AirPods? You tested those out too. Tell us about those. So the AirPods are Apple's uh, wireless headphones. I, I've tried Bluetooth headphones over the years and I just, I can't use them because the sound is so awful, so tinny. And when it comes right down to it, I mean, music for me is is about enjoying the music. And, you know, there's there's fidelity in music and a, and, and a, a wideness when you listen to a greatly uh, mixed and mastered song that, you know, you just, you feel the music. And Bluetooth headsets uh, just didn't get any of that. I was pleasantly surprised to see that the uh, AirPods have quite a bit of bass in them. The music sounded really good. Not as good as my future Sonics. I never expected them to, but they sound a lot better than what I would have given them credit for going in. Now, it's not only the, the AirPods themselves, it's some of the things that Apple did. For instance, if you have the AirPods in your ears and you're listening to music and you take one out, the music will automatically pause. You put it back in, the music will automatically start playing again. Uh, if you're on a phone call, you can have both of them in and hear stereo. Or if you take one out, it'll switch to mono on the one that's left in, in your ear or switch them around and do the other one. So you can double tap, if you're, listening, if you're on your iPhone, double tap the AirPod and invoke Siri to ask it a question. Uh, on the watch, if you're playing music from your watch, you can double tap and it'll play pause the music. You know, things like that. I mean, the other day I was listening to a playlist on my uh, watch using the AirPods. I went over and pressed the button to ask Siri a question. The music on my watch paused. The AirPods automatically went to the iPhone. I asked my question, left everything, didn't touch anything. And in, within five seconds, um, Siri closed out, the AirPods connected back to my watch and started playing the song again. And it was all uh, seamless. There was no herky-jerky motions or anything going on. It just, it connected to one, back to the other, played music. And, you know, that's, that's I think, kind of the stuff that we expect from Apple that other companies get away with, that we, we allow them to. Did Siri answer your question correctly? She did answer my question. <laughs> she did. Actually, that's something else is interesting to note. I, I found that the uh, 
uh, the AirPods, the Siri was able to pick up my voice better using the AirPods oh, than nice. just sitting and and speaking. Interesting. So. So you write that uh, in your reviews, you say, I am not a child. I think I can take care of my uh, AirPods um, because everyone's saying they're going to lose them. I'm not a child either, but I do not think I can take care of them. I just really, really believe I would lose those things right away. I know it's just become an internet meme, but how am I going to keep them track of them? <laughs> how, I, don't, I don't know how you wouldn't. I mean, I've had them where I, I put them in the case. And by the way, it took... I ran the AirPods down to zero battery. Uh, they were dead. And it took less than 15 minutes to charge them up to 100%. So uh, anytime, you have a couple of choices. Anytime that you have them, um, you can just pop them in the, um, in the case and then you know where they are. The second thing, yesterday, um, as you know, I was at a, a Giants game yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was wearing the uh, the AirPods when it was time to go into the game, and I met up with uh, a friend of mine. I just took them out and put them in my pocket. It's probably not the smartest thing to do is just put them in. But that's what I did. I just put them in my pocket. I knew where they were. When I get home, um, I went outside. I pulled them out of my pocket and popped them back in my ear, and away I went. Well, let's so, move on to the... Let's move on to the watch, which I can't okay. lose because it's attached to my wrist. Maybe I just need to figure out a way to attach <laughs> them to my ears, which I guess you also say they do stick stick in your ears and you're someone like me who's the ear, the ear pods fall out of. But the watch, uh, what can you tell us about the new watch? So the watch has uh, GPS now. And to me, that's a huge thing because I, uh, I lost 50 pounds using the watch and rings and exercise and things like that. So, but I always had my iPhone with me when I was doing that. Uh, because you, you kind of needed, I, I needed the music and I didn't have any good wireless headphones and I wanted to know where I was going and be able to track things as, as best I could. So I always had my phone with me as well. But now I, I it's kind of freeing to leave, purposely leave my iPhone at home, which is not something I do. Uh, often at all, and just go out for a walk, just to have a walk, and you know, be without the iPhone for you know thirty to sixty minutes and and exercise. Um, they also have swimming now. So when when you go in to um, do a, a swimming workout, the iPhone will automatically lock the screen so that there's no accidental taps on the screen. And the GPS knows where you are and your speed because every time you bring your arm out of the water for your stroke, the GPS will know from the satellite where you are. So it will do a map of where you swam or it will keep track of your, your lap times or things like that. Uh, when you're done, you uh, turn the digital crown and it will eject all the water from the speaker area, which is the only place that water can get in on the, the new Apple Watch. So it's it's pretty advanced. I, I really like it. 